Hey everyone, it's Sevi, and I'm back with another Tower of Fantasy video. It's been around 5 days since the global release, and you might be wondering how to best spend your time, your vitality, what goals you can do outside of main missions. So it's also time for you to keep improving your stats and CS level, because being underbuilt might make the overworld monsters more difficult than they need to be. Along with that, it's also a good time to start diving into the MMO nature of the game, as well as the PvP if you're interested since it's already unlocked. So these are 10 things to do to keep leveling up your account and getting stronger. If you don't know how the different currencies in these stores work, you can check out my other guide linked below as we'll be going through them quite a bit. Let's dive in! Number 1. Farm Your Joint Operation Joint Operation is a co-op dungeon that comes in three stages and you can open chests three times, which is why it costs 90 vitality. But you don't have to open each chest, so you can still do it with less than 90 vitality. For me, it's currently the most worth place to spend your vitality in order to get matrices and equipment. There are other activities you can do that will give you things to level up your matrices and your weapons, but personally, I haven't needed to use my vitality to farm these and I'm playing as a free-to-play player. Eventually, when you run out of these from world exploration and mission rewards, then you'll have to farm basic level up materials, but right now, it seems very low priority. So to go into a joint operation, you need to match up with other people or go with a team. And then keep in mind that you want to select the highest level that you can access. The higher the level, the higher rewards that you can get. So for example, if you're currently level 30, you can grind till you reach level 31 in order to reach the next level of the joint operation dungeon and get potentially better rewards. Number 2. Farm proof of purchases and matrices from Void Rifts. As of recording, the Void Rifts aren't accessible yet, but the level cap should be raised to level 35 soon, if not already, by the time this video comes out. So, Proof of Purchase, which is the first one here, are your gotcha summons for matrices on the standard matrix event. But you can also see from the icons you can get SSR and SR matrices, and these are quite important in making your weapon stronger, so definitely take advantage of farming these. Number 3 is to get rewards from fighting bosses. Boss fights actually drop a number of very nice rewards and as you can see here, getting SR or SSRs are actually among the possible rewards. I was able to get dupes of SR weapons from doing perfect deciphers. Now I've already heard of some getting the SSR copies but that must be a very low chance. You'll be able to use these yellow type 3 chips to get a perfect decipher but they are in very limited supply. Anyway, it's fine to keep collecting boss drops even without the chips since they don't cost vitality and it's better than nothing. Now when you fight bosses, have a team or accompany other groups in the world. It's much harder if you do it alone or even with one team unless you guys are strong and coordinated enough. Number 4 is to do the Bygone Phantasm. The Bygone Phantasm is like the Spiral Abyss of Tower of Fantasy. It's a good way to get rewards, good way to test your builds, and it saves your progress per level so you can just return anytime and it won't reset you. Number 5 is to revisit your ruins and do them on a higher difficulty. Doing them on a higher difficulty gives you level up rewards but more importantly relic shards and omnium crystals. I have some done here but as you go along and discover more ruins there's always a chance to go back and do it again. Number 6 is to get rewards by raising your exploration level. So going to the map and then you click an area down here at the bottom, you can actually see the different rewards you can get from your exploration. And the most important here are the Mighty Mushroom, which increases your endurance limit. And after that is the 5 gold nuclei, which of course you get to wish with. There's also a cool skin to unlock in the second to the last milestone. Number 7 is to go through your crystal dust store. Going over to the crystal dust store over here. You can rack up crystal dust points by spending vitality, and this store might be easily overlooked, but it's got some really good deals. For example, here are some booster modules, which I have purchased and finished them through the week because there is a limit to how many you can get per week. Prioritize those first as those are for enhancing equipment slots. Number 8. Speaking of equipment slots, the next tip is to enhance or advance your equipment themselves. 
Now, it's easy to pay attention to your weapons and your matrices, but you might be forgetting about the equipment that also needs leveling up. So these pieces of equipment are still stat boosts to help increase your CS level. There are two things you can do with it when you click the enhancement page. First, you can enhance, and this universally applies to that slot. It's 100% transferable, so feel free to switch immediately to a better piece of equipment and you'll still retain the enhancement. Unfortunately, I can't enhance my pieces anymore because I've spent all my booster modules this week, but you get the idea. The next thing you can do though is advance them, and this you can do with prior pieces of equipment plus these crystal things. It only applies though to the equipment itself and it adds stars. However, this is not transferable, unlike enhancement, and you might want to save advancement for actually good equipment, higher level equipment that you're able to get in the future. Number 9 is to level up your suppressor. In order to level up your suppressor, you need potent omnium crystals for this. However, once it reaches level 3, it's no longer based on your level but on your CS. So you need to keep leveling up your weapons, matrices, and as I said before, better equipment to keep adding your CS and that will allow you to level up your suppressor further and gain more stat increases. Number 10 is to join a crew. I do have my crew here, it's still a small crew over on NA Solaris, it's called Fantasevi, but overall you can get crew points from here which you can spend in a store. The rewards here are easy to get, you just need to remember to accept the missions and submit them when they're done. Now the crew leader will continuously upgrade it in order to improve the rewards, however it does need a lot of points, so I guess be patient if you're still a small crew. Other than that, you can spend the points in the crew store. Going over to the crew store here, you see a bunch of different things. Among them is that potent omnium crystal, which you need for your suppressor. And then we have some extra relic shards over here that you can purchase. My last tip is to help others even when you don't have vitality in order to get support points. Going over to the support point store real quick, there are two important things here that you will want to purchase. First are the black nuclei, this has a weekly limit of 10 and costs 3000 support points in total to get all of them. Next is the joint supply chip. Now these joint supply chips will allow you to get double the chance of getting higher level equipment from joint operations. There is a weekly limit of 3 so get them and prioritize them and use them when you get the chance. And those are my 10 tips for leveling up and strengthening your tower of fantasy account. If this helped you out, don't forget to leave a like and let me know in the comments how your experience or how your account progress on Tower of Fantasy has been so far. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already and I will see you all soon. Take care!